So the show Love is Blind gifted us this man to prove all my points about men being liars <laughs> through omission and devil talk. So this is part two. If you haven't seen part one yet, there's a link in my caption or just hit the playlist. It's the video right before this. Uh, please watch the first one. I do a deep dive into Love is Blind and give examples of how men will literally make you crazy and make you look crazy. So even if you haven't seen the show, I hope you don't waste your time, but hopefully I can make all my points whether you've seen this show or not. And this is how Chelsea, who called herself Me Megan Fox, whatever, is now suffering the consequences of trying to rig the game. But this man is awful and makes her look way crazier than she actually is. But just so you know, she needs therapy and should stop going dating for a while too. But Jimmy is trash. Trash, trash. Okay, so I don't know if this is actually what's happening, but this is how I'm interpreting it, especially since I know that he's hooked up with at least one of these women. And also because I know how territorial women can be, and especially as somebody who used to be a cool girl and was always really jealous of any women that got close to the men that I was good friends with, I'm telling you, I believe they were saying without saying, like, this man is our man. Like, you need to kiss the ring, baby. Look at this. They're like, right away, they're like, yeah, you know, wanted, acknowledge that they were the ones that picked out that ring for her. She's like, yeah, I think you guys killed it. And then comes the interrogation, which is what we expect. Your friends should be interrogating this person. So, I mean, again, I especially if you're a woman and you have female friends with you interrogating a guy, these women are the people who should be asking the very hard questions that maybe you didn't think to ask. So, I, I don't disagree with what they're doing, but just because of what I know about them, and also what I know about, uh, or about, you know, the backstory of some of them, and also what we learn later on, about the fact they're always texting and then he slept with one of them and you know this is the south where all this stuff is like next level right they're like so have you ever lived with a guy and she's like well no i mean just when the guy i was when i was married look at this reaction very judgmental react oh wow dang didn't know that mm, you've been married hmm and then she's like, yeah, and then he's the only one who really gave me a hard time about it. Because he did. There's nothing wrong with the fact that she'd been married before. But this guy seemed to think it was a big deal. You know what's an even bigger red flag? A guy who has never had a long-term relationship. Which, I forget his backstory, but like, bro, you are no less of a red flag than her. At least she tried. And he's like, no, but I had a hard day. That stupid mom told me about her dumb kid. <laughs> I, I, you know. And they're like, so, how do you know you're ready to be married again? Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this woman on the left is the one that he <laughs> slept with. And her looks are like next level. Like these two are looking at each other all the time being like, so much is said with nothing being said, especially in the South. So Chelsea actually gave a pretty good answer. She's like, yeah, you know, I've been working on myself. Um, I've been building my career. I'm really happy where I'm at and I want someone, and I really think, Chelsea, you need to work a lot harder on yourself. Go date yourself, be single, right? Like again, I'm not saying that she's not accountable for any of this. I've been calling her out plenty. But I do think that people are just, they do not see, they're siding with Jimmy when he is the one, he is like Mr. Gaslight. She's insecure and he's literally hitting all of her buttons. But she gives good answers in this interview. And then she even says that he makes me feel really seen and heard. I'm like, okay, um, how did he do that? Is it because he actually talks to you instead he's mean to you like the other men? Like, who have you dated before this? Because if you think Jimmy is like seeing you and hearing you when he literally called you the wrong name behind your back right after he's about to give you a ring, like, and this is again, men also, they benefit from other men having treated us like crap. Men benefit from the violence, the em emotional, physical, uh, schmegual abuse of all other men. They benefit from it, and this is a perfect example. She feels seen and heard and keeps telling herself he loves her because he keeps saying it. But that part of her that's anxious, wants to vomit all the time, that says he drives her crazy, that's like ha saying like the truth when she's drunk, that is the truth. And then she's like, yeah, he's like so emotional, you know? And we like connect. No, he's not. He is emotional. All men are emotional. All men are incredibly emotional. They just police themselves and don't show certain emotions. And then especially 
If we're insecure and we are, you know, pick me ish, they use their emotions very strategic strategically. Then she's like, you know, I'm emotional because I'm a freaking lady. Now, also because he calls you emotional every time you have a good argument about him being ridiculous. But look at her face. Y'all, this, I know this look. This, like, it was really hard watching this season as somebody, a recovering Southern woman. <laughs> Because the violence of women against each other in that region is so, you can't, you can't point it out. They're like, you know they hate you. And they're like, <laughs> Anthony actually said that he felt, being in the South, he said, felt like wearing a straight jacket. Being in the South in white communities, the same way I talked about in that Revolutionary Road video, if anyone watched that, that what they're performing all the time, God, I don't miss, I don't miss that. I think that's why, one reason I love France so much is they're very direct, relatively speaking. Not saying that they're ever not direct, but in general, like, no. Instead of, well, okay. Mm -mm. So then she brings up this story. Chelsea, why did you do this? <sighs> this whole story about her initiating Schmegs and him turning her down, basically. Or, ba or I, didn't, I don't think he turned her down, but he basically made it known that he didn't want to. And he has a right to turn it down. But this is a woman who is touch starved. She's desperate for validation. She's desperate for physical connection because that's the thing she's the most insecure about is that you're not actually attracted to her. So she's got a big insecurity about this and they talk about it in look. The same woman who gives these looks is like, I don't think that's one thing that he would ever turn down. Do you, do you see the violence in this statement? I'm telling you, she knew exactly what she was doing here. Oh, so that's, I'm, that's surprising. That's not something he ever turns down. First of all, I think this is the woman he was sleeping with him. I know because I, uh -huh. but they know Jimmy so well. It's shocking that he would turn it down. Hmm. I wonder what that's about. And then they're like, tell us everything. Chelsea, do not trust these women. I have no, I don't know these women. I'm just commenting on the edits and I'm projecting my own childhood and teenager years and, you know, adolescence and returns back, return visits home. But to quote Whoopi Goldberg, you're in danger, girl. Tell us everything. And then they start talking about Schmegs more and she's like, she keeps making, look at her look. Like this conversation was so confusing because Chelsea's trying to say something and they're like, oh, he has a big heart. Is that the right word? Look at that, seriously. Then they're all laughing like, ah, I don't even know what this, what's happening in this conversation. But look at her, she's like, did you see how big her eyes got? And they're, it seems like they're talking about the size of his. <laughs> but how would she know? Hmm. And then she was like, oh, he cried during Schmegs? Wow. Didn't do that with me, she didn't say it, but. Like, th these girls want to know way too much. This conversation is so inappropriate. For women that you literally just met that know him so well, like, oh my God, Chelsea, you walked into a trap. <laughs> like, while y'all had schmegs, he cried. No, he did not. He's like, I did not cry. <laughs> you did. You definitely did. So then they go into this, and this is like, Chelsea, run. So she's all like, Jimmy is very dependent on whoever he's with. She's like, yeah, he told me that. Yeah. They're like, oh, in a good way. And this right here is what, ugh. if you ever meet women who describe the man you're engaged to like this, run. And then she's like, well, clearly not the past couple days. He's not that neat. So then they end up having to tell the story. Chelsea, you were talking too much. Tell me about the past couple days. Tell me. I'll tell him. Okay. He said I was clingy. Now look at her face. Why is she making that face? Clingy. Again, they're shocked. Huh, that he thinks you're clingy. He would never say that. The thing is, this is a person that can't breathe without somebody pushing air into your lungs. This is how they describe Jimmy. Jimmy is like, they're literally describing an exhausting king baby, needy man who is selfish. If you weren't clingy, he'd be like, she hates me. She's like, yeah, yeah, that's what he told me. I'm like, she's so confused because they're describing someone very different than what she's experiencing. So they're making fun of him. And you know, her legs stopped touching me, mine last night. She doesn't love me anymore. Yeah, that's because Jimmy doesn't want Chelsea. And so the fact that he has to touch her at all 
pisses him off because he signed up for Megan Fox. Megan Fox. Oh, sorry, Mother. Sorry, me. So then they're like, oh, man, he's so annoyed with me. They're like, just, just don't talk to him for a while. And then he'll miss it. And how do you feel about Jenny having close friends? Hmm? Like us? She's like, well, I was like a little worried at first, but, and I love this answer, but I have close guy friends and one of them is an ex-boyfriend because we realize we're better off as friends than partners. That's a good answer. That's an honest answer. So when he told me about you guys, I had no room to say ever, even say anything. Again, see, I, I know she's a really insecure woman, but I really don't think she's being unfair in a lot of these interaction. I think this man just gaslights her all the time. And then she also says that in the past, she's dated some people who had good girlfriends and then they cheated on her with those girlfriends. So there's something in my head. So she knows she has like an insecurity around that. And so yeah, she, she might be projecting a little bit. But then when she finds out that he hangs out with them all the time, texting them all the time, going out with them when they when he should be this experiment and forked one of them, Come on! So they end this conversation, at least the edited version, of how he told her that they were like gonna love her, you're gonna have new friends, and again, like, their smiles are really bothering me, given this whole conversation. And they were like, I mean, you seem really great so far. He's like our brother, so... What they're saying here, in my opinion, is like reminding her you gotta get through us. We're protective of him. He's like family. Like, I don't, I mean, again, a lot of times women will use their proximity to men to like terrorize the girlfriends of these men. Okay? We see it with mother in laws all the time and sister in laws and all that stuff. Like, like, we have, women play a lot of games within patriarchy, like chess pieces to secure our own power and proximity to men, right? Especially pick me's and cool girls and toxic boy moms. And this absolutely is a kind of move that I probably did at some point when a woman, not a girlfriend, but like another woman who thought she was good friends with the guy that I was good friends with. I would, I may not have said anything to her, but I always felt very threatened. My daddy issues were threatened. My sense of importance was threatened, all of it. So I'm just saying, I understand if that's what these women are do, I understand where that operating from that place comes from. And what, it took a lot of hard work on myself to like not operate from that place. But when you are operating from that place, if that's what they're doing, these women are vicious, vicious. Pick me women, men, women who center men are just as dangerous as the men themselves because we know how to maneuver these men, especially in the South. And he's like, they trust my judgment. She's like, and then Maddie, I think that's the one he hooked up with, was like, yeah. And basically, I'm pretty sure that what they're saying here is like, and if we didn't like you, we'd tell him. We tell him like it is, because we're, we're like his big sister. Notice they didn't say sisters, they said big sisters. That is a very intentional phrasing right there. That is a like, we tell him what to do. But big sisters, y'all know that kind of dynamic in a family? So they didn't say we're like twins, we're not his sister. They didn't say we're his little sister, like he's a protector of them. He said, they said big sister. If you've ever dated a man who had a big sister, who he was intimidated by, and who called the shots, you know what this is about. Sometimes men have amazing relationships with their sisters. I'm just saying. Patriarchy plays out in every single area of life. In small ways, in big ways, you can't, it, it, it just, it's everywhere. It is the water we are swimming in, okay? It's not like a one-off. So later on, when they get in a fight, because he went out partying with these girls, I think that's who he's with. And we learn also that he's had schmegs with one of them. He's all like, look, if you want to sign up with me, you have to sign up with my friends too. So this fight right here is the perfect example of him double talking, right? First he's like, my, my friends come with the package. And then he's like, you know, you haven't even asked me to like step back and not hang out with them as much. And she's like, yes, I have, but you haven't listened. When? Tell me right now. Do you want me to step back? Okay. He's accusing her of never suggesting this ever. And she's like, no, I did. He's like, okay, well, yeah. Okay, so you want me to step back? She's like, of course I do. He's like, well, I'm not willing to step back. <laughs> Like he said just before. So this whole thing escalates. He walks away and she's like, basically now is where she drops the bomb. Like, I know you forked her. You told me you did. Off camera. And look at this. Because I want you to trust me. No, that's not why he told her. I want y'all to see what he's doing right here. 
It seems as though he was just being honest. The same way Jeremy was just being honest. Look, she, she messaged me so that he is not um, culpable for lying. See, I told you the weed had met. Not only that, him telling her that they had hooked up before knew that that would get in her head. Knew her backstory with having been betrayed before by men cheating with their female friends. Knew that she was craving attention and affection and he'd already turned her, was turning her down. Not giving her reinforcement of, of any love. It was all one-sided. And then after that meeting with those friends, which I'm sorry, but you know, she probably picked up on their power move in that meeting. And now, and now she knows what it's about. So she's upset. And he's like, but I told you the truth. I told you the truth. You told her the truth to mess with her. This man does not want to be with her. And he knows that if he breaks up with her, he will look bad. So he's purposely sabotaging this, gaslighting her, making her look crazy. So that if at the end he says no at the altar, it's because she's too insecure. Not he's full of rut. Emoji right there. And she's like, I do. I trust you, but I'm uncomfortable with it. Which, I don't know. Just tell him you don't trust him. I don't think you trust him. And he's like, yeah, well, I don't want to talk about it. Anytime he doesn't actually want to have to acknowledge her feelings, which are valid that he's went out and hanging out with these girls that he's so close to texting them all the time. And he also, you know, forked at least one of them. She said, no, okay, fine. I trust you, but I'm uncomfortable. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. And then he claims that a little bit later on, I didn't have a clue what Jess looked like. He tries to make this whole thing like, you're just being, you're fishing. You're fishing. He keeps saying that. You're just insecure because of uh, what Jess looks like or what I saw what Jess looks like. And then he, 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 we already know from Jess that he knows what she looks like because he followed her on Instagram for a little bit. And then he unfollowed her. He followed her so he could look at all her stuff, unfollowed her, and then set his to private. She told us that whole story. So he's lying here. Oh, I didn't know how she looks like a Jeremy showed me. Liar. So she's talking about she doesn't want to be with a guy who's drinking all the time, going out with a friend. And that's legit. I do think men should have friends and go out and do stuff with them. But it's like what they're doing. You know, if they're going out and drinking all the time, I don't want that either. You're not a single dude anymore, bro. Anyway, she keeps saying, I don't want to be with this kind of person who's doing this. Oh, well, if you don't want to be with that kind of person... You don't want to be with me? And then this is dr this is drunk Chelsea. Drunk Chelsea is honest Chelsea. You know, a lot of people say what they really mean when they're drunk. Not always. Sometimes people say things they really don't mean just out of anger. But drunk Chelsea is telling some truth here. She's like, it just really makes me wonder what I'm dying at. What am I dying? I don't want to be with someone who goes out all the time like you. Oh, okay. You just think I'm full of shit every time I tell you how I feel? I do. You know what? I've given... And he, look at this. He's like, all I can do is continue to get you to, to trust that I'll be a good husband. Why don't you trust me? Despite all these things. Why don't you trust me? Like, you don't, you're just saying that you don't even trust the things I'm saying. Bro, she doesn't owe you trust. And all of your actions literally give her no reason to trust. And this is him, him gaslighting. You crazy. You're not trusting me. That is him saying... You're being crazy. And we know what that's about. Being dramatic. Drama queen. Making something out of nothing. No, she knows you don't like her. She can't admit it to herself yet. She's very confused because you also keep saying crap like that. You know, in front of my friends and family, if I see how I feel in front of men, and then, I, you know, you don't believe me, then I don't care to be with you either. Now he's dangling that abandonment issues in front of her. And she's like, we have two weeks to figure this out if we're going to get married. They really don't have much time for this experiment. And you're worried about partying instead of basically spending time. Because once they're back in their lives, they're working a lot. They actually don't have that much time together. They only had like a week on that, at that vacation. These people don't know each other. Why is he going out and drinking? And he's like, oh. see, she has a really good point. He's like, I don't have this conversation. Every time she has a good point, you don't want to, and now he doesn't want to talk. I've done nothing but prove to you where I, I'm at with you. No, you confuse the crap out of her. You're confusing me. Not really, because I can see through this game. You don't think I love you? See, he is attacking her for having valid concerns. And he's literally, this is deflection. You? You know? And then she's like, you show me. And he cuts her off. If you don't, if you don't think I love you, I don't want to be here. See? Instead of taking responsibility for all of his actions that have shown her that she should be worried, he's turning it around and being like, if you don't trust me 
and all my inconsistent double talk actions, then the problem is you. Why would I want to be here if you don't trust me? And he's like, you know, it's not going to work. And now her biggest fears are about to become true because he's dangled that I'm leaving you again. So then she chases that, please don't leave, you're talking. You overstepped my boundaries of actually calling me on my crap. That's my boundary. What are you, Jonah Hill? What, are you, you gonna make her wear the same clothes as you too? Call that a boundary? So then the next day, they have their whole like reconciliation talk. I just feel like a little betrayed the other night. He feels betrayed. Shocker. So, you know, I took a long walk and I decided I don't want to do it. So, and she's like, oh my God. So you're saying no? Again, now she's humiliated on this show. Doesn't get to wear the dress and have her moment. I mean, you told me you didn't think I love you. That statement alone, that hurts my feelings that you don't think I love you. Do, are, do you see this? And please tell me that you see this too. That hurts my feelings that you don't believe the lies that I say. <laughs> it hurts my feelings. And I always fight for the woman I love. Yeah, I know you do, but you don't love her. <laughs> it's that simple. You're saying that I'm not giving you enough love and attention because I won't, I'll go a whole day without kissing you. Can't believe you're not satisfied. Because if you haven't remembered this scene, even on their honeymoonish, whatever you call it, he was making her feel insecure by roping AD into it. She asked him about how are the guys? They're good. That woman though. What? What woman? That woman is absolutely stacked. I could do a whole video on just how disrespectful this is. Schmedulizing the only black woman in this entire cast, humiliating her. I don't know if she felt humiliated, but objectifying her, schmedulizing her to get back at the woman that you're marrying, that you're pissed at because she lied about her look, that you hate, that you want her to feel insecure. Out of nowhere, he is schmedulizing the butt of a black woman. Like that, that, like there's so much historical context to that right there that is so problematic, but this video is already way too long. So maybe I'll talk about it in, the, in another video about this. But like roping AD, who is minding her business into their toxic relationship, literally calling it a book. Like this scene made me so mad. I said it the most, ugh. And AD, AD played it off so well. Oh, how do you get, you know, they're asking her how she has a, a butt like that. I think she said the gym and Jesus, like boom. Perfect answer to like the fastest, like the wittiest response. And then these two, they just kept like, anyway, this was a whole thing where he did this to get back at her and make her in feel insecure. And instead of dealing it with him, she roped in a black woman into it by literally being, hey, you know what he said? Like, oh my God, anyway. This is the man who does stuff like that, who is like, I mean, how can I possibly give you any more love and reassurance? And she's like, I can't apologize anymore. But when things, she's trying to say her piece here. When things get tough, I'm like, I need to know that you're not just going to walk away from me like you have so many times or threatened to do. And he's like, look, I was proud of myself for not leaving last night. When you were treating me that way, he is taking no responsibility right now. You were treating me that way by calling me out on <laughs> my crap. She's like, yeah, but it wasn't just me. I love that. I love that. She wouldn't let him do this. He's like, well, yeah, I mean, it goes both ways. But. Then she does this. I mean, I felt more in love. Like, stop. Ah. And she's like, what else can I do? If you are always the one apologizing, you are in a bad relationship. What can I do to make you feel this could be a yes? Like, please don't leave me at the altar. I need you to never cross the line before. Like, being honest with me. She's like, yeah, like, same for you. And she's like, where are you going to say yes or no? And he's like, do I want to give it a shot? Because he's got the upper hand. Yes, I do. Do I forgive you f the other night? I do. She's like, me too. Because it wasn't just me. You're the reason I'm here. That man hates her.